What is up guys, before we get started with today's video, I just want to pull you all aside and say thank you to anyone who showed love and support to the channel in 2023, or love and support to the channel regardless. I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart yet again, because here we are in the great year of 2024. I had a feeling this video would be coming out in 2024, because like I said in my update video, a lot of stuff uh, with life and responsibilities outside of the channel does sometimes get in the way, and that was the case for the last week of t december and the first week or first few days of uh 2024 and uh so hopefully this video can get out sooner than later i would like it to get out within the first week of 2024 at least but who knows life and responsibilities is a bitch and a half at times and i just want to say thank you for those who choose to stay around and i even gain subscribers while not uploading which i feel like i don't deserve those subscribers because i'm doing nothing really they're just looking at content that i've made weeks or months ago so thank you for those people who have recently joined the channel uh i don't know what pulled you in but uh if you would like to tell me what did please tell me so i can start doing more of that so yeah here we are happy 2024 thank you for anyone who has shown love and support to the channel i hope that 2024 is a great year i feel like with how things are looking the only direction that this channel is going is up because of y'all and with that said let's move on to the video and i really need to get rid of this christmas tree so what is up guys welcome back to another video another video means another dopamine high because the buy something feels something and today we're doing something a little bit different we don't have a review in store for today we have more of an overview and analysis and that being for Jazzwares' Halo the Spartan Collection Waves 7 and 8. And there's multiple reasons for today's video. The first one being that it's been a minute since Waves 7 and 8 of the Spartan Collection have been out. So we've actually had time to, you know, collect our thoughts and, you know, actually compose like how we feel about said figures of Wave 7 and 8. A second reason is that I am an absolute Halo shill. I love Halo 2 bits and pieces. It's my favorite gaming franchise. So if I have an opportunity to make anything Halo related on the channel i'm going to take that opportunity so that's another reason why this video exists third reason being that this isn't the first overview or analysis video that i've done the first one was with hasbro star wars the black series gaming greats republic commando delta squad members i had a fun time making that video for the size of my channel i thought it was pretty well received i love the engagement and overall had just a great time with the video so i figured i'd make another overview and analysis video and it being on my favorite gaming franchise of all time with figures that i just genuinely do enjoy taking a look at uh what, what could go wrong so that's another reason i'm making this video is because i just enjoy making these kind of essay formatted videos and the final reason and the most realist reason why i am making this video is because at the time of this video's conception in my brain i had nothing to review nothing to put on the channel and i don't like not making content so i figured i'd cook up an overview and analysis video because that just requires me having things i've already taken a look at so yeah out of fear of not uploading uh this video was conceptualized in my brain and this video is taking fucking forever this video was supposed to come out in the middle or end of december and here we are in 2024 so yeah literally i started work on this last year if you will but yeah i wanted to put out a video despite not having anything to review so here we are with this video one thing I want to make very clear is that this video can and can't act as a substitute for any of the reviews for the figures in these video if you do want to see a super in-depth video that breaks down every little thing that the figures have to offer you're better off watching the individual reviews for said figures and then coming back to this video I mean you could just watch this video and not watch any of those reviews but there is information that you could potentially be missing out on so I will put links in the description of this this video to the reviews to the respected figures in the video and with that uh, if you do want to pick up any of these figures for yourself good fucking luck jazzwares does not make getting these figures easy at all and if you don't know what i'm talking about jazzwares made waves seven and eight not easy to obtain at all i'm very grateful that i have all the figures that have released so far for these waves but basically what i'm talking about is wave seven is only obtainable in person and by that i mean you have to go to your local gamestop and hope that they have any wave 7 figures because that's the only way you're getting those figures for a retail price after that you have to go to the you know gods of ebay and hope that they're merciful on your wallet and i just want to interrupt myself because i do want to correct one thing about what i just said because it isn't true that all of wave 7 is available at gamestop in person there's actually one figure that i've completely glossed over and i glossed over this figure in my wave 7 reviews and that is the spartan killer 
I keep forgetting and many other people keep forgetting that this figure is part of wave 7 seeing that on the box art for this figure a uh, wave 7 was you know shown off so this figure is not obtainable in person this figure has not been on store shelves for a long time now and the only way you can pick up this figure for the retail price is on Amazon so I will put a link in the description of this video to that Amazon link but after that if you can't get it on Amazon you will have to go to the gods of eBay and pray that they don't butt fuck your wallet and then for wave 8 the only way you're getting those figures is in person at your local GameStop but there is a glimmer of hope because GameStop did add the wave 8 figures to their website so th those two ways are the only way you're getting the wave 8 figures for retail price and then again you have to go to the gods of eBay and pray for mercy that they don't butt fuck your wallet so that's the only way you're getting the figures for wave 7 and Eight, I will put links in the description to the Wave 8 figures on the GameStop website. So if you do realize at any point during or after this video, you want to pick up any of the Wave 8 figures, you will have that ability to go down into the description of the video and buy the figures for yourself. But God forbid you want a fucking Wave 7 figure, you're going to have to go to your local GameStop and hope that your local scalper didn't pick them all up because holy shit. And now the intro of the video is done. If you want to get to the meat of the video and not listen to me go on a mini tangent, you can skip right to the meat of the video using the YouTube YouTube chapters feature on this video but this is just me briefly briefly in air quotes explaining how I'm going to format this video so like I said if you don't want to hear me go on a mini tangent explaining how this video is going to work you can skip right to the meat and just start listening to me talk about wave 7 and 8 and I feel like the only reason I'm including this segment in the video is because I feel like the original draft of the video was very sloppy is very all over the place I feel like I could have lost y'all so to prevent that I want to just kind of explain how the formatting of this video will work so it's easier for y'all to digest this video and understand what is going on so the formatting for wave 7 is going to be the same exact formatting i use for wave eight so pretty much what's going to happen is i'm going to introduce the wave and i'm going to be completely objective about it i'm going to state what it brought to the table and how it changed the future of the spartan collection whether it's for better or for worse and then i'm going to go into the individual releases of said wave talk about what those figures have brought to the table uh, to the spartan collection be completely objective there and then give my subjective thoughts about the individual releases and then after that talking about the releases i'm going to get into a conclusive resummarization of said wave and then you know segue on to the next wave and then after eight i'm probably just gonna briefly talk about what waves seven and eight have brought to the spartan collection as a whole and then with that i'm gonna probably talk about the future of the spartan collection and what i would like to see from future waves of you know the spartan collection so hopefully y'all understand what i'm trying to achieve with this video and uh, this video is now going to be easier to digest for y'all so with that said let's move on to the meat of the video so with wave seven of the spartan collection and me being subjective briefly is i find this to be the most interesting wave that we've gotten in the spartan collection to date and that's because of everything wave 7 has brought to the table for the spartan collection and three of these factors can be attributed to the first release being of the spartan killer this figure alone did a lot for the spartan collection uh, it being the first release dating all the way back to November of 2022, making this wave technically the longest lasting wave in the Spartan collection, also giving us our second elite figure and third deluxe figure. But after that, other things that wave seven would bring to the table to the Spartan collection would be the final figure we would all need to complete blue team with the release of Frederick 104. After that, we'd also see an old mold we haven't seen since wave two, which is the mark 4 spartan mold with the release of alice 130 also continuing the red team line and then after that and the most notable thing that wave 7 did for the spartan collection was improve upon the knee articulation now some might deem that more of a subjective take but i'm pretty sure from everything i've seen online everyone is happy with this change and direction in articulation in the knees because for the longest time the knee articulation in the spartan collection was not very good it was very weird looking it didn't feel right and with this wave they jazz wars fixed that and everyone from what i've seen is very happy with this change and one last thing i forgot to mention was that wave 7 also gave us our first ever canceled halo figure that being of the spartan yokai so with those factors in play let's discuss the individual releases of wave 7.
And for our first release of Wave 7, we have the Spartan Killer dating all the way back to late September, early November of 2022. This would be our second Elite release following after the Arbiter with his Halo 5 appearance. And then this would also be our third deluxe figure that we see in the Spartan collection. And following the release of this figure, most people would find the Spartan Killer a direct upgrade from the Arbiter figure because they removed the spring in the waist joint of the figure. For those who don't know what I'm talking about with the release of the arbiter figure there was a spring put into his waist area and what would happen is this would cause the arbiter to always want to lean forward so if you wanted the position leaning back or side to side or anything like that the figure would be very resistant in doing so because it always wanted to be leaning forward and with the release of the spartan killer they did remove that spring allowing for people to articulate their figure much better and the accessories included with the spartan killer are of course the swappable hands that come standard with every spartan Spartan collection figure and then we have our first ever pulse carbine in the Spartan collection then we get his blood blade energy sword and then for the final piece we do get his wrist energy blade which is goes by the name of ghost pierce which i didn't know until doing research for his character so the more you know so with all that basic information now out on the table i can get to my more subjective thoughts about how i actually feel about this figure now at the end of the day i do think that this is a solid figure i really enjoy the fact that jazzwares did improve the articulation and feel of this figure uh following the release of the arbiter i i like how with this the spring being gone in his waist piece he can actually you know move around and be articulated in uh, more than just leaning forward i do enjoy the accessories i think it's a great selection of accessories and i think that their visuals are great even if there isn't that blue light on the barrel of the pulse carbine i don't think it's the end of the world uh the only thing that i would nitpick about the accessories when it comes to this figure is a you can't remove the wrist blades which you know if you want them to two hand the pulse carbine or any other weapon uh, the wrist blades kind of just get in the way and it looks awkward and then I wish that the hand for the pulse carbine was a little bit tighter because if you try to have him one hand the pulse carbine because it's awkward when he two hands it because of the wrist blade the pulse carbine just kind of falls out of his hand or it droops down and it just kind of hangs there but then when it comes to the visual presentation of this figure about 95 Five percent of this figure looks great i love the robotic arm i love how most of his armor looks i think that this is overall a great looking figure the only two things i would nitpick is a the pigmentation of his skin in my opinion is a little too light for his in-game appearance if you look at his in-game appearance his skin is a lot darker than what we got on this figure and then the second thing is that on the combat rig he does have battle damage in game and they did sculpt that but the issue is in game you can see the circuitry and all the wiring and jazzwares just completely ignored that and painted it all black like the rest of his armor rather than you know you know getting those little details down which you know i understand it's a small piece of his armor but it still would have been cool to see at the end of the day so I do think that the accessory selection for this figure is great. I just wish they handled the wrist blades a little bit better. I wish that the hand for the pulse carbine was a little bit tighter. And then the visual presentation, the majority of the figure looks great. I The skin pigmentation is really just my opinion. Some of y'all might think that the skin pigmentation for this figure is already fine. And then when it comes to the little circuitry, again, some of y'all might not care because of how small and minute it is. But I just still think it would have been cool. And yeah, that's pretty much everything on the Spartan Killer. And for the second release of Wave 7 and our first standard release, we have Frederick 104, better known as Fred. This was the final figure we needed to complete all of Blue Team for those who are collecting the Blue Team members. So the appearance of this figure is really interesting because at first glances, some people might believe that this is the appearance Fred made in the package from Halo Legends, and they'll assume that because of the helmet and shoulders on the figure. But if we take a deeper look at the figure, we can see that this figure has some Gen 3 Mjolnir on him which we see in Halo Infinite. And obviously we don't see Blue Team in Halo Infinite, so 
now the question is when do we see fred in gen 3 mjolnir and the answer is on the cover of the book shadows of reach which is a really good book by the way but on the cover of you know that novel we see all of blue team in their gen 3 mjolnir and you know fred obviously that design took heavy inspiration off of the package design of fred and when it comes to fred's accessories obviously we get all the swappable hands that come standard with a spartan collection figure but when it comes to the weapons for fred's primary we get a dmr but this time it is the halo 4 and 5 dmr making it the first time we're seeing it in the spartan collection and as for his secondary we do get the sidekick which we've seen a thousand times by now and for those wondering no you cannot not take the knives out of Fred's shoulders those are forever in place so with all of Fred's basic information out on the table I can give my general thoughts and opinions on the figure and when it comes to things that I would consider cons or things I would improve upon there's only three things that do come to mind the first thing being the torso articulation or lack of there being if you haven't uh, been around the channel or you watch any of my Spartan collection reviews Jazzwares doesn't like giving these figures torso articulation they can't rotate 360 degrees they can't lean back and forth or anything like that that, which is really sad and then the second thing that comes to mind is the elbow articulation and by no means is it like the torso articulation where you can't move the elbow or anything like that you can move the elbow it's just with the current state of the elbow articulation you can't have the forearm surpass the 90 degree mark and for my opinion at least that what makes good elbow articulation is if you can make the forearm surpass the 90 degree mark and the only reason i'm kind of anal about it is because the better the elbow articulation the better the arms can move around the more mileage the figure can get out of the accessories that come with said figure and also i'd really like it if the figures can properly hold their weapons and have it look like they're really aiming down sights but because of the current state of the elbow articulation you can't have your figures look like they're aiming down the sight of their weapons unless the weapon has either a no stock or b has an overall short build and unfortunately with fred he comes with a long rifle and the stock is pretty big on the dmr so he can't properly aim down the sights of it he can point it look like he's firing from the hip or something like that but you can't have him aiming down the sights which in my opinion kind of sucks and then the third and final thing is the knives i really wish Jazzwares took advantage of the knives and shoulders and have it so we can take them out similar to how noble team and the knives that came on some of the figures for them were able to like come out and you can have it hold it in their hands and then obviously you can put the knife back in the sheath whenever you wanted i just felt like that was a missed opportunity and would have given us some more bang for our buck for this figure so moving away from the negative and going into the positive starting off with visual presentation i think Jazzwares knocked it out of the park despite how deceiving the knives look on his shoulder i think that you know the, the overall sculpt of the, this figure is great i really enjoy how they got as many little details down as they could as usual with the spartan collection figures and then the paint job is great i know in my review for fred i said maybe a little bit of grit a little bit of black wash will really top off this figure but when it comes to the base appearance whether it's the sculpt or paint job this figure is great and then when it comes to articulation y'all already know i don't like the torso articulation on this figure because there is none to begin with and then i'm a little iffy about the elbow articulation i wish that there was a little bit more range but besides those two factors i think the head articulation is great i think the leg articulation is great and the articulation in the shoulders for the figure is good it's just the elbow that is killing me in the arm region and then when it comes to the accessories i don't really have anything to say about the swappable hands they're still doing a good job with it so uh nothing really to point out there uh the sidekick again we've seen the sidekick a thousand times nothing really to point out and then with the dmr though i think they did such a great job with its visual presentation the sculpt work is great the color separation or color variety is solid in my opinion they didn't go too crazy but they also don't really need to to do a good job and even though we've already seen the dmr with the release of carter and that being the reach model of the dmr this is obviously a different model so i will consider it a new weapon in the portfolio of the spartan collection which isn't a bad thing at all because more guns mean more fun when it comes to our figures and more accessories mean more options and ways we can display our figures so again i really like this new addition to the spartan collection so overall i do think that this is a really solid entry into the spartan collection and i do believe that the positives really outweigh the negatives especially since two of the negatives one is more of a subjective take of mine and also the other one is just a missed opportunity that some people can live without uh, but overall again positives definitely outweigh the negatives 
and I especially recommend this figure if you are trying to get all the blue team members seeing that this is the last figure that everyone needs if you've been collecting them as they come out so with all that said that's all I have on Fred let's move on to the next entry And for our third release of Wave 7, we have Alice 130. With the release of this figure, we see a mold we haven't seen in a long time since Wave 2 to be exact, and that is the Mark IV Spartan mold. This was initially seen, like I said, in Wave 2 with the release of Jerome, and all that time we haven't seen any other red team members until now, and hopefully with Wave 8 we do get to see Douglas, or at least we get to see Douglas release. And for those wondering the differences between these two figures since it's been such a long time since we've seen the Mark IV mold, I am. I'm going to go into that starting off with the articulation between the two and it is exactly the same jerome came from a time where the articulation was in a lot better state for the spartan collection and with wave 7 trying to get the figures to go back to that state if not better of course there's nothing really they would need to change about alice's articulation of course the lack of torso articulation is still prevalent and the forearms can't exceed the 90 degree mark but after that everything else is great and where the real differences come into play is with the paint job of the figure starting off with the shade of green they chose for alice it's a little bit lighter than what they went with with jerome kind of going back to the halo wars one look then next we have the hands are actually painted on alice where on jerome they were just left all black but then after that jazzers either added or changed the colors in the elbow thighs and knees of their armor and then getting into Alice's accessories, obviously the figure comes with a bunch of swappable hands as that comes standard with all Spartan collection figures. But as for her weapon, starting off, we have her shotgun. This is based off the Halo 2 anniversary model. And this is also the same shotgun mold that we saw with the release of Jerome. There's been no differences made to the scale or sculpt. The only difference is that the shade of gray has been made much darker. And then for Alice's second weapon, we do get a chain gun, which is our second time now seeing this in the Spartan collection. The first time being with the release of George. The only difference between the two is that Alice's chain gun doesn't come with the yellow line that we see on George's chain gun. And now with all of Alice's general information out on the table, I can get into my more subjective thoughts, and obviously I'm going to get into the negative first just to get it all out of the way, because just like with Fred, the positives definitely outweigh the negatives, and also like Fred, there's only three things that come to mind that I'm nitpicky on when it comes to Alice. Starting off with the torso articulation, it really sucks to see. I'm going to probably bring this up with every figure in the Spartan collection, so just ex expect it at this point. Another issue that I did have with this figure, or not an issue, but something that I was kind of nitpicky with, and this is my more subjective nitpick, is the elbow articulation and how it doesn't really allow the forearms to go above the 90 degree mark. I would just really like the elbows to allow that so my figure can get as much mileage out of whatever accessories they're using. And again, it's more of a subjective take but it is a negative take nonetheless and then the final one and the one that i think most people will agree with and that is the shade of green they chose for alice if jerome was the same color as alice i would have no complaints but because they are quite literally two different shades of green i see that as an issue because when i go to display all of red team whenever douglas comes out uh, jerome isn't going to stick out because of his you know iconic red stripes but because he's literally a different shade of green and i assume that they're going to make douglas the same shade of green that alice is because that figure is the most updated look of the mark IV mold and honestly i don't mind the actual color itself it's just because you know they're all supposed to be the same color and now it's just going to look weird when you display them together and again this could be a subjective take i don't know some of y'all might not mind but to me personally i just wish that they kept the shade of green consistent with these figures so moving away from the negative and into the positive with this figure getting into articulation first head articulation is solid the shoulder articulation is great and the entire leg segment is phenomenal especially with them fixing the knee articulation in this wave and then when it comes to visual presentation yes i'm not a big fan of the shade of green they chose for alice simply because it doesn't match jerome's but it's again not a bad color it's just i wish that they were consistent with what color they were making red team and then when it comes to the sculpt work it is phenomenal they got as many little details down as they could and honestly just besides the shade of green i think everything looks great on this 
figure and then getting into the accessories and yes i know we've already seen these weapons in the spartan collection but the reason i am pointing them out is because jazz wears actually paid attention to the lore and what i mean by that is when we see alice in halo wars 2 she's either using a shotgun or a chain gun uh, other weapons might be from scripted events or whatever but her loadout consists of a shotgun and the chain gun so jazz wears instead of giving us one of the two primaries and then like a magnum or something they decided to give us both which i can just really appreciate them going that extra step and being consistent with the lore and that's pretty much everything i have to say about alice you know the positives definitely outweigh the negatives my only real true complaint is that i wish they kept the shade of green the same as jerome's i don't know why they decided to change that but after that my other two complaints are common complaints that are pretty standard for the spartan collection and then after that again the positives definitely outweigh the negatives so amazing head articulation shoulder articulation leg articulation the sculpt work is phenomenal and the accessory selection is lore accurate and phenomenal. moving on to what is seen as the final release of wave 7 and the most anticipated figure of the spartan collection by some halo 3 master chief if the fixed knee articulation didn't get you excited for wave 7 it was definitely this figure my favorite halo game is halo 3 and my favorite chief design is halo 3 so on top of hearing the knee articulation being fixed knowing that this figure was introduced into the wave i was ecstatic and i'm pretty sure a lot of spartan collection collectors were as well and fortunately to my surprise they didn't just reuse the Halo 2 Master Chief and recolor it and tweak it to look like Halo 3 Master Chief. They actually built this figure from the ground up. I think the only part from Halo 2 Chief that this figure reuses is his boots. But after that, every piece from his helmet, his chest, his thighs, his calves, forearms, shoulders, whatever all built from the ground up which i'm very happy and i think many other people were happy to figure out because the halo 2 chief was not very well received whether it was from the neon green paint job to the wacky articulation it was just an overall a hot mess and i think many of us were very happy to see jazz wears actually you know compose themselves and you know really take their time on making this figure really stick out and in this video, I'm just scratching the surface when it comes to comparing and contrasting the Halo 2 and 3 Chief figures. If you really want to see me break it down in the original review I have for Halo 3 Chief, I go over every little thing that's, you know, when it comes to comparing and contrasting Halo 2 and 3 Chief, I go over every little thing that Jazzwares got wrong and right with the Halo 3 Chief figure. And I go on this little tangent for about nine and a half minutes, almost 10 minutes, I am breaking down every little thing so if that's something you're interested in by all means go check out my halo 3 chief review if it doesn't i don't blame you that segment that visual presentation segment is very much for people who are interested in that kind of stuff uh so go check that out if you're interested after watching this video and then moving over to accessories obviously we get all the swappable hands that come standard with your spartan collection figures but as for weapons starting off with this primary we do get a battle rifle that is based off the halo 2 anniversary and halo infinite models and then as for a secondary we do get a magnum which is based off of the reach model so with all the basic information for chief out on the table i can start getting to my more subjective opinions and starting off with the negative because i just want to get it out of the way as usual and very much like fred and alice only three things come to mind and also like fred and alice the positives i promise do very much outweigh the negatives the first thing that no one should be surprised about is the lack of torso articulation and then the second thing which again is more subjective is the elbow articulation and just how i wish it was a little bit better so the forearms can surpass the 90 degree mark so the figure can get more mileage out of the accessories because the better a figure can move their arms the better they can wield an accessory the better they can wield their accessory the more things they can do with said accessory and then the last thing and this is me being really nitpicky this is really subjective this doesn't actually dock any points for the actual figure itself this is just something i wish jazzwares did and that is make the weapons that come with chief be the right models and what i mean is that this is halo 3 master chief but the battle rifle is from halo 2 anniversary and halo infinite and i wish they gave us a halo 
Halo 3 Battle Rifle, and then of course the Magnum is a Halo Reach Magnum, and I wish they gave us a Halo 3 Magnum instead. I thought it would have been a really nice touch, just kind of like how they gave Fred a brand new DMR instead of reusing a mold that they already had. Again, I know I probably sound super whiny and bitchy, it's just, ra I don't think it necessarily ruins the figure, I just thought it would have been something that would have been really nice to see. And then moving away from the negative and into the positive, starting off with articulation for this figure. Head articulation is great, shoulder articulation is great, and the leg articulation is phenomenal. Then moving on to visual presentation, I think they knocked it out of the park for the most part. The shade of green is perfect, they usually had a hard time getting the shade of green for Chiefs right, I think the only Chiefs that they got the shade of green right for before this figure was the halo 4 chief at least in my opinion but after that the shade of green is great they got his you know battle damage on his chest they got so many details down in the sculpt work i think they did a phenomenal job for what it is and then despite not really liking which models of the battle rifle and magnum they chose for i think it was a really good choice to use the battle rifle and magnum a very safe a very classic loadout for halo 3. so overall this figure looks really good for the most part it feels really good and the accessories even though they're not the right models are a great selection for this figure. So with all that said, I think Jazz Wars handled this figure really well. They really made sure to get as much right as they could, and I can't be thankful enough for them not just reusing the Halo 2 Chief figure. So with all that said, let's move on to the next Wave 7 release, or uh, what was supposed to be the next Wave 7 release. And even though this figure actually has never released, I feel like we can talk about the Spartan Yokai and uh, I can go over some interesting things that have come from this Spartan not releasing. So yeah, just to be very clear, this is a cancelled figure. This figure was supposed to come out in Wave 7 of the Spartan Collection, but never did. Obviously, this figure was first announced in 2022 with the release of the Spartan Killer because we would see this figure on the back of the box with the lineup of Wave 7. And while we waited and waited and waited for Wave 7, the first time we would officially be able to see these figures was at San Diego Comic Con of 2023. And we got to see Frederick, we got to see Alice, we got to see Halo 3 Chief, but the Yokai didn't make an appearance. So people started to speculate and worry that Jazzwares wasn't going to release this figure. And unfortunately, those people would be right. Because when Wave 7 hit the shelves at GameStop, people were looking for the Yokai left and right. And obviously, there was no yokai to be found so people are like as long as wave 8 doesn't release yet we still have hope and then obviously wave 8 released and there was no sign of the yokai but this one theory that i have been seeing online that's being tossed around the spartan collection community whether it's on reddit or twitter is that jazzwares is going to re-release wave 7 of the spartan collection and the reason why people are theorizing this is because wave 7 was kind of just a very quick release uh, at least when it came to the standard figures because they just threw them on gamestop shelves and then i want to say a month or two later wave 8 came out so I, I just guess people think that because you know all the figures were just quickly released and they were only made to be able to pick up in person so not it, they weren't easily accessible to everyone you know it, it, they're going to accommodate the fan base by re-releasing the wave so those who missed out on the first wave can get them this time and with that second wave or second launch of wave seven the yokai will be there i don't think that this is going to happen it would be cool and it means i get to make another review for wave seven of the spartan collection but i just honestly don't think that this figure is going to be coming in wave seven jazzwares had all this time to cook up this figure and you know they didn't release it so you know, I, I believe that they might be still working on the mold and we'll see a Yokai Spartan in a future wave of the Spartan collection, but I don't think we're going to see this in Wave 7 at all. I don't think that they're going to try and, you know, bring back Wave 7 just to release this one figure. If they want to re-release the other releases, I I mean, I completely get it. it. It was a pain in the ass for people, for at least from what I'm seeing online. It was a pain in the ass for people to pick up Wave 7. I'm very grateful I was able to get them all in one, you know, trip. But, you know, I don't think this figure is going to be coming out, you know, anytime soon unless it's in a future wave. And this all sucks because I was excited for this release and when I know something is coming out, I try to prepare as much as I can with what I know about the figure. So like I studied with shader, I tried going over, you know, like the accessories on his armor and everything. I tried getting photos and whatever I could ready for a video, but 
the figure never came out and all that research was for nothing so don't get don't get me wrong as much as i wish that we'd be getting this figure i don't see it coming anytime soon So overall, I think we can all agree that Wave 7 is a very interesting wave in the Spartan collection, whether it's the figures that were included to, you know, all the technical and behind the scenes things included with this wave. So just, you know, to give you all a reminder on what Wave 7 has done for the Spartan collection, it is considered the longest living wave starting in late 2022, and then obviously the rest of the figures coming out in late 2023. The first release was our third deluxe figure in the spartan collection and second elite release with the spartan killer after that they gave us the final figure we needed to complete all of blue team with frederick 104 they brought back an old mold that being the mark 4 spartan mold with the release of alice 130 and then they gave us our next chief release which was the halo 3 master chief after that this wave was also deemed the revival wave because it fixed the knee articulation that we've had for a long time that no one really liked and you know obviously you know now we have this brand new knee articulation that everyone loves because it looks and feels good and we can't forget the fact that we saw our first canceled figure ever in the spartan collection with the spartan yokai and just like with the individual releases of this wave i'm gonna go over what i like and dislike but with the wave as a whole and obviously i'll get the negative stuff out of the way first so we can focus more on the positive when we get to that and i just want to start off with the wave specific issues first so start off with the spartan killer i wish that the wrist blades were removable from his arm so you know it doesn't get in the way of any other accessories and then i wish the hand for the pulse carbine the grip on that was a little bit tighter and the last thing is i wish they really painted the circuitry inside the battle damage of his suit and then when it comes to fred the only thing that comes to mind is the knives i wish that you were actually able to use them and unsheath them just like with the knives that we saw with some of the noble team members and then with alice i wish they made her armor the same shade of green as jerome's rather than changing it so when you display them together they're all the same shade of green like in game and then with halo 3 master chief there's actually really nothing that I have to complain about but because you know this is my video and I can do what I want I'm gonna say I wish that the battle rifle and magnum that he came with were the halo 3 versions of the battle rifle and magnum because you know it's a halo 3 figure doesn't ruin the figure just figured I throw it in but when it comes to the wave as a whole I think the only thing that I dislike about wave 7 and it doesn't really have to do with any of the figures themselves is the lack of communication that Jazz Wars had with the community when it came to releasing these figures because we got the Spartan Killer all the way back in 2022 and they kind of went radio silent after that they did show off the figures at San Diego Comic Con uh, but again they didn't really do anything except show them off and give us no more context besides that they are coming and then they didn't give us a release date when these figures were coming out they didn't tell us that they were going to be gamestop exclusives and that Tal target and walmart were going to be just removing their halo sections altogether and they failed to communicate the fact that you're only going to be able to pick up wave 7 in person so if you do want to pick up your figures online you can't do that or if you're very far away from a gamestop it's going to be a really big hassle for you just to pick up these figures in person I will say I am grateful that I was able to pick up these figures all in one trip because I do live around a couple game stops. So again, I'm very grateful that I was able to get these figures. But I know, like I said, not everyone has access to a GameStop as easy as I do and it just really sucks how hard these figures are to obtain and Jazzwares isn't really doing anything to accommodate that at least for wave 7 they're not then getting into what I didn't like regardless of it being wave 7 or not starting off with the torso or lack of torso articulation I really wish our you know super agile super soldiers would be able to move their torsos and have our you know figures be able to express themselves uh, but no we can't because jazz wars doesn't want to fix this issue hopefully in a future wave they do but unfortunately we have to deal with this for the time being and then the second thing is the elbow articulation now it's not the worst elbow articulation i've seen it's not really bad at all i just wish that the elbow articulation would allow the forearm
forearm to go past the 90 degree mark because once the elbow goes past the 90 degree mark you can get a whole lot more mileage out of weapons and other two-handed accessories and i really just want my spartan to look like they're aiming down sights i'm not asking for a super tactical you know really militaristic like figure that's like a thousand toys quality or something like that i just really would like to have my spartan look like he's properly shouldering his weapon and aiming down sights but with the current state of the elbow articulation that isn't possible uh which personally bums me out some of you all might be okay with not being able to do that but me personally i would like to see that happen uh and honestly those are the only two things that do come to mind now moving away from the negatives and into the positives starting off with the wave specific things first and starting off with the spartan killer i think the biggest you know plus of this figure is how much this figure improves upon the elite articulation from its first release which was the halo 5 appearance of arbiter then with fred i really like how his figure introduces a new weapon to the spartan collection which is the halo 4 and 5 dmr with alice i really enjoy how it shows that jazzwares isn't giving up on red team and i also really enjoy the loadout that they gave alice it's really lore accurate to her character with halo 3 master chief i really enjoy the fact that they rebuilt this figure from the ground up instead of reusing a bunch of parts from the halo 2 master chief it just shows that they really wanted to get this figure right instead of reusing something that didn't work so well in the past despite that being the easier route and then getting into what i really liked about wave 7 as a whole starting off with what really brought the fans back with this wave which is the knee articulation it's really nice to see that we're seeing this quality again it's a step in the right direction it shows that jazzwares does care and does want to improve their products for us because we haven't seen knee articulation as good since waves one and two because uh after that waves three to six the knee articulation was very bad very just gross looking and just overall unpleasant to deal with and with you know jazzwares fixing the knee articulation it again just a, it's a overall step in the right direction and shows that you know they're trying to improve the spartan collection and give us nothing but the best and try and give this series a very promising future which uh i'm pretty sure it will with what we see in wave eight then after that if you couldn't tell already i'm very happy with the figure selection for this wave and i'm also very happy with the accessory selection for this wave we got to see some new stuff we got to see some stuff return that we haven't seen in a minute and overall just again solid selection of accessories and figures for this wave and with all that said that's pretty much everything i have to add about wave seven we're only 40 minutes into the video like i didn't expect it to be this long <laughs> But that's everything I have to say on Wave 7 for the Spartan Collection, which means we can move on to Wave 8, guys. So when it comes to Wave 8 of the Spartan Collection, I will say it's also a pretty interesting wave. I won't say it's as interesting as Wave 7 because obviously there was the hiatus of the standard releases for that wave and also the technical stuff that went on behind the scenes that affected the wave on top of having a whole cancelled figure. So I think those like three things alone make it a pretty interesting wave. So Wave 8 is a really close second and we will you know get into that as the video goes on. But what did Wave 8 you know bring to the table for the Spartan? in collection so starting off wave 8 gave us the final figure we needed to have all of the in-game appearances of chief that being the halo 5 guardians appearance of master chief secondly this wave has showed us our first missing figure not our first canceled figure that was wave 7 but our first missing figure and i'll go on about that later in the video and then thirdly we see what most of the community deems improved elbow articulation which if you couldn't tell about the amount of bitching i did about the elbow articulation in wave 7 i'm very happy about this change and finally these figures are the first figures to make it online to an actual retailer since the purging of all the halo figures from the walmarts and the targets and especially since wave 7 wasn't anywhere online for purchase except for ebay and with that pretty much all out on the table i think we can move on to the individual releases of wave 8 For our first release in Wave 8 of the Spartan Collection, we have Commander Agrina. She's the kind of Sarah Palmer of Halo Infinite, you know, the, uh, you know, drill sergeant for our multiplayer Spartans. 
And honestly, I was a little surprised when I saw the leaks for this figure. I didn't think Jazz Wars was going to make a figure of this character, at least not yet. Because, you know, there's not that much known about this character. There isn't any extensive lore or backstory. And when we do see her uh, in-game, it's not for very long. Uh, I, I don't even know if there's like a cult following for this character. There might be. I don't know. I'm not saying that this character isn't worth liking. I'm pretty sure there's people out there who like this character. I think the design and their armor is really really cool i just personally am indifferent at the end of the day about this character so you know until we get some more lore or screen time uh, some kind of character development or exposition on them i'm just at the moment indifferent not to say that this is a bad figure or a bad character i was just surprised that we were getting this figure this soon so obviously this figure has the knee articulation from wave 7 because wave 7 made that quality of articulation standard and obviously this wave introduces the new elbow articulation which a lot of people including myself are liking so good articulation aside, what does this figure as an individual bring to the table to the Spartan collection? Does it do anything that no other Spartan figure does? And technically, yes, it's the first Spartan figure to come with a prosthetic leg. I know that we've seen a prosthetic arm with the release of Cat in Wave 1, but you know now we're seeing a prosthetic leg with this figure, and I didn't even know this character had a prosthetic leg, so Jazzwares could have completely skipped out on that, and I wouldn't have known at all. So... Jazzwares, you could have fooled me, but good attention to detail. And then briefly looking at Commander Agrina's accessories, obviously she comes with the swappable hands that come standard with every Spartan collection figure. And then after that, she gets a swappable head, and this head does its job. It pretty much resembles how she looks when her helmet is off. And then for her first weapon, we do get a Hydra, and this is the first time we are seeing the Hydra in the Spartan collection, so it's great to see a new weapon added to the Spartan collection weapon portfolio. And for her second weapon, we do get a sidekick, which we've seen this mold a thousand times now, so I'm not really going to go in depth with that, but it is included. So getting into my more subjective thoughts about this figure and starting off with the sour stuff to just get it out of the way, and honestly, there's just only one thing I dislike about this figure, and it's not something... I guess about the figure as an individual, but something that Jazzwares has been doing for a long time, and that is the lack of torso articulation. This figure cannot do any 360 degree rotations, can't tilt side to side or back or forth with their torso. It's just a stiff mess, and I really hope that one day Jazzwares in a future wave does fix this. And then moving over from the negative into the positive, there's a lot to like about this figure. Starting off, the articulation for the most part is very solid. Head articulation, arm articulation, and leg articulation are phenomenal the visual presentation of this figure is also great they got as many little details down as they could with the sculpt work and the paint job i can't find anything wrong with it solid color choices solid shades i just have no complaints about the visuals at all with this figure and i could always be like oh i miss the grittiness of mcfarlane era figures which i really do but this is jazz wears this thing and yes it would be really nice to have some grit on these figures but it is what it is and for what they gave us it's still great looking and honestly when it comes to the accessories well the sidekick is just the sidekick I don't really have anything to say about it but when it comes to the Hydra I think they did such a great job at you know sculpting all the little details down they got some of the printing that we see on the weapon in game and I just think they handled that accessory really well and that's pretty much everything I have to say about Commander Agrina so with one release of Wave 8 down and two more to go uh, things are looking pretty promising so let's move on And for our second release into Wave 8, we have the Belos Haran, which also makes it our second fracture figure in the Spartan collection. It would have been our third with the release of Yokai, but Yokai didn't release, so he's our second. And for those wondering what a fracture is, fractures were introduced in 2021 by 343. They're a non canon alternate universe to the Halo universe. And for instance, the Belos Haran is from the Mythic Fracture, where all the Spartans' armor are based off of different ancient warriors throughout multiple, you know, civilizations in the humanity. And, you know, obviously, Belos Haran is highly inspired off of Rome and the Roman soldiers and the Roman Spartans. But if you didn't know, now you know. And fun fact, the title of this figure Belosron is only referring to the helmet the shoulders forearms torso the legs are completely different pieces of armor I go over that in depth 
in the review for the Bellosteron. So if you want to really know everything about this figure's apparel, you can go check that out in the video. But just a little fun fact that Bellosteron is only in reference to the helmet that the Spartan is wearing. And then taking a look at the accessories that came with Bellosteron, obviously we get all the swappable hands that come standard with every Spartan collection figure. But for our first weapon, we get an assault rifle, which is based off of the Halo 3 model. And it has a skin that we can see in game called Vexing Tomorrow to match the aesthetic of the figure. And for our second weapon slash accessory, we get a spear, which is called the Tigetus Dory. In game, it's a back accessory, but obviously because this is a figure and we can do whatever we want with it, uh, people are going to display him using it as a weapon. Uh, including myself so the Tigeta story is the second weapon slash accessory included and for our third accessory and technically third weapon you can use it as a weapon if you want is the lion heart shield again in game this is an accessory that you put on the back of your spartan but because it's an action figure we can do whatever we want with our figures we can put this in the hands of our figure and they can use it however they please and now with all of belosferon's basic information out on the table i can get to my more subjective thoughts and with this segment obviously you know, I like to get the negative stuff out of the way first. And honestly, there's only one complaint that comes to mind, and that is just the lack of torso articulation. Uh, and yeah, it's really where it all, you know, starts and ends. But moving from the negative into the positive, things that I really like about this figure, starting off with visual presentation, a lot of these figures are looking really good, but this one, it's just the attention to detail is insane because with this you know figure there's a lot of engravings a lot of markings a lot of just different things going on with all the lion heads and just so much effort was put into this and like even the undersuit it's chain mail so like they have to get all the individual chains and stuff like that it's just the amount of sculpt work on this figure is insane and i have to give jazzwares credit for getting as much down as they could and then the paint job is great i have no issue with the paint job whatsoever and then the accessory selection is a top tier because they could have just given us an assault rifle with a magnum and just called it a day but no they gave us an assault rifle with a skin that matches the vibe of the figure first off but then they gave us two accessories that you know initially in game you can only wear on your back but you know knowing that we would be able to you know pose them and put it in the hands of our figure so just the amount of accessories and you know the selection of accessories and how they went about with the assault rifle i just absolutely eat that shit up and adore the attention to detail so i think Jazzwares hit this figure out of the fucking park when it came to you know you know planning the visual presentation and accessories that just there's so much to love about this figure is all i'm trying to say and i feel like there's some irony with this figure because this is a really well-made figure like we can clearly see that jazzwares put a ton of effort into the design of this figure and the accessory selection how they went about the accessories uh, but the issue is i don't think a lot of people are going to be picking this figure up because it's simply a fracture figure it's simply a you know halo figure that is you know part of you know a non-canon event and that doesn't you know 100 percent match the halo aesthetic and you know that kind of sucks because this is a really well-made figure that i feel like a lot of people would appreciate but because it's you know simply a non-canon and you know different looking figure from the bunch uh people aren't gonna pick it up so if you are looking to, you know, scratch that Jazzwares Spartan Collection itch and you need more figures and you don't know which one to pick up, I, I do recommend this one. This is a figure I would recommend the people just simply because of how well made it is. But that's pretty much everything I have to add about the Belos Haran. Highly recommend. Highly, you know, detailed figure. Can't say that enough. Uh, and with that said, let's move on to the next release of Wave 8. And for our third and what people are considering for now the final figure of wave 8 is halo 5 guardians master chief and with the release of this figure this would be the final figure everyone would need to have all of the in-game appearances of chief and for those wondering yes this figure is just the halo 4 chief just you know painted up to look like chief's appearance in 5. And because this is the same mold that we saw from wave six unfortunately that means this is the same quality of articulation that we saw in wave six meaning that the improved knee articulation is not present on this figure for some reason the elbow articulation was you know the same that we saw in wave eight so i don't know why they gave it to 
you know halo 4 chief but you know none of the other figures in that wave or in wave 7 but you know at least we have that to work with and then getting into chief's accessories obviously we have the swapple hands that come standard with every spartan collection figure release and for our first weapon included, we have a new addition to the Spartan Collection, and that is of the Binary Rifle. And it's really cool to see more Promethean weapons being added to the Spartan Collection, because before this release, we only had two, that being the Scatter Shot and the Bolt Shot. So it's nice to see a new Promethean weapon be added. And unfortunately, though, this is the Halo 5 Binary Rifle, and I say that because Halo 4 Binary Rifle is best Binary Rifle. And, you know, besides that, you know, I love this addition to the Spartan Collection. Collection. And then for our second weapon, we do have a bolt shot for his sidearm, and this has been improved since the first release with the Spartan Venator. They touched up the paint job, that's really about it, gave it some more color variation, and uh, yeah, it looks good. So with all that information out, out on the table, I can give my more subjective thoughts on this figure, and starting off with the negative just to get it out of the way, only two things do come to mind, the first one being, and I've said this for every figure so far, the lack of torso articulation because Jazzwares does not like giving these figures torso articulation so I'm not going to further expand upon that and then the second thing that comes to mind is the you know downgrade in quality for the knee articulation because they used a mold from wave six uh, it just really sucks to see I get it they save money it saves time on production and all that but it would have been really nice to see a you know figure of chief you know from the four and five era with improved knee articulation because i do like this design of chief it's not a bad design it's not my favorite don't get me wrong but like it's still a solid design and i thought it would have been really cool to see this design of chief with really good articulation especially in the knee area and then moving into the positives of this figure when it comes to the articulation the head articulation is great the arm articulation is great and in the leg it's just the knee that's bad after that you know moving around the thigh and like the foot is really great it's just the knee that is killing me then in the terms of visual presentation they did a great job with the sculpt work they got down as many details as they could as usual and the paint job is great you can tell that this is clearly halo 5 chief by the shade of green and the red arrows and everything that we see going on with his design and when it comes to the accessories i really like how they improved upon the bolt shot not that the first release of the bolt shot was bad but you know they did find room for improvement and they you know applied it to the accessory so it's nice to see that and the binary rifle they did a phenomenal job with they got down that promethean orange they got down all the different shapes that we see throughout the firearm it's just a great looking accessory and i'm happy that they included it with the spartan collection and that's pretty much everything i have to add to halo 5 chief i think it has a solid appearance i like the accessories the articulation is a little disappointing especially when it comes to them reusing the old halo 4 chief knees but overall it's not a terrible figure and that's pretty much all i have to say on this figure so with that we can move on to the next segment So when it comes to this figure, it's pretty interesting because I'm not considering this a cancelled figure on like the yokai. I think Douglas is what we should consider a missing figure because there is physical evidence of the Douglas figure, like there is photo evidence and we can see that he comes with a rocket launcher and what looks like two SMGs and like they had his packaging, everything ready for, you know, the hit shelves, but for some reason this figure out of all the wave 8 figures was the one to not hit store shelves we don't know why hopefully we can get an answer sooner than later and following that answer we can get this figure on store shelves sooner than later uh it just sucks to see because this is the last figure that we needed to complete all of red team and you know jazzwares is holding back on us and it, you know again sucks to see and hopefully in the near future we can all have a douglas on our shelves So with all of Wave 8's information pretty much all out on the table, we can get into, you know, talking about the Wave itself as a whole. And again, just to summarize, what did Wave 8 bring to the table? Well, first of all, it gave us the improved elbow articulation that I've been bitching for for a very long time, and a lot of people have been wanting to see as well. Then we got our last figure needed to complete all of the in-game appearances of Master Chief with Halo 5 Guardians Master Chief. Thirdly, we got our second ever fracture figure with the Belos Haran. He would have been our third, but unfortunately the Yokai from Wave 7 was cancelled. 
And we got what I'm dubbing our first missing figure in the Spartan collection with Douglas, who would have also been the last figure we needed to complete red team. And I guess if you really want to count it, one thing that Weve also did was give us our first Spartan with a prosthetic leg with the release of Commander Agrina. And then getting into the pros and cons, strengths, weaknesses, likes, dislikes, whatever you want to call it, of Wave 8. Starting off with the negative just to get it out of the way first. And one thing that does come to mind that I dislike across all three individual releases is the lack of torso articulation. This is something that us Spartan collection collectors have been dealing with for a very long time. And we've been voicing our opinion about it the Jazz Wars for a very long time and nothing has been done to improve upon it. We can only hope that in some future wave that they do just like how they improved the knee and elbow articulation with waves seven and eight but that's just my only issue across all three figures and then going a little more in depth with the issues that i have with wave eight by looking at the issues that i had with the individual releases starting off with commander agrina and the bella saran I have no issues with these figures except for the lack of torso articulation which by you know spartan collection standards is really really good if that's the only issue because that's an issue we've been dealing with a long time so we're just kind of used to it at this point so that's really good to you know in my opinion where that's the only problem with these figures but the one figure that had to be the problem child is of course halo 5 guardians master chief and the only reason that this figure is an issue is because jazzers decided to use an outdated mold for the spartan collection and that was the halo 4 master chief mold because literally halo 5 chief is just an updated you know halo 4 chief and because they did that the knee articulation is not on par with what we've got with wave 7 and 8 and it kind of bums me out because a i love the design of halo 4 and 5 chief i know it's not everyone's favorite it's not my favorite by any means it's just a cool looking design and it sucks to see that this figure just kind of you know is slacking in the articulation department because a well articulated halo 4 and 5 chief would have really been awesome to see and that's pretty much all the issues i have with this wave which i think is the least amount of issues i've had with a wave in the spartan collection if it's just torso articulation and one figure has bad knees so comparing that to the other waves that we've gotten in the spartan collection this wave is doing pretty good when it comes to you know quality control and all that i mean of course it sucks to see them going back and kind of you know using an older mold just to save time on production of money but it is what it is uh i rather have one issue than a bunch of issues so i'll take my dubs where i can get them now moving away from the negative into the positive side of things about wave eight things that i liked across all three figures were their visual presentation very happy to see that, you know, Jazzwares really took their time and gave us their very best. I love the sculpt work that he really sculpted down every little detail they could. And the paint jobs really complement the sculpt work as well. So I have zero complaints about visual presentation when it comes to these figures. Then in regards to articulation for Wave 8, when it comes to Commander Agrina and Bella Saron, they have phenomenal articulation all around except for the torso of course, but that's with every Spartan collection figure, but their head, arm, and leg articulation is solid, especially with Wave 8 introducing the new and improved elbow articulation on these figures. Unfortunately with Halo 5 Chief, because he uses an older mold, I can't give as much praise when it comes to his articulation because the knees are all kind of janky, but his arm and head Head articulation is still solid nonetheless but taking a more in-depth look into the individual releases of wave a first up is commander agrina the only thing that i haven't talked about that i really like about her release is that she gives us a new weapon in the spartan collection weapon portfolio which is the halo infinite hydra which i really do think is a great addition to the spartan collection i do like its design and i think jazzwares handled it amazingly when it comes to its visual presentation and when it comes to the belos haran the only thing that i haven't talked about that i really do like is how jazzwares handled the accessories and again you have to give Jazzwares credit where credit is due. They gave us an assault rifle, but with a skin that really matches the aesthetic of the Spartan. And then they gave us some accessories that not many people might not even know about, which is, you know, the spear and the shield in game. They're purely cosmetic, but Jazzwares knew that we were going to put this in our Spartan's hands and they really, you know, went all out for this figure. So I really like how they handled the accessories. 
And then for Halo 5, Chief, the one thing that I haven't talked about yet in this segment is his binary rifle. I, it is a new addition to the Spartan Collection weapon portfolio. And the more weapons that are entered into this portfolio means the more, you know, ways we can display and interact with our other figures. So more weapons mean more fun when it comes to action figures because it's always fun, you know, messing around and giving them different accessories and swapping who has what and i'm gonna die on that hill uh, i don't think it's really a hot take but i just like making that point very clear and that's pretty much everything in regards of the individual releases of wave 8 now i just want to talk about wave 8 as a whole and obviously i want to get the negative stuff out of the way first and the first thing that comes to the mind is the lack of communication that jazz wars had with the fan base yet again because we had no heads up, no release date, nothing. We didn't know when Wave 8 was going to come out after Wave 7. It could have been a year. It could have been the exact day after all the Wave 7 figures hit the shelves. We didn't know. And because of the lack of communication, a lot of people missed out. Because by the time some people were aware Wave 8 was hitting store shelves, they already it was already too late. A bunch of scalpers or collectors already picked up the Wave 8 figures. I will say I am fortunate enough to pick up the figures when they came out. Uh, but again, it just kind of sucks to hear of all these stories of people missing out because Jazzwares didn't want to give us any kind of release date or heads up on Waves 8. And the second and final thing that does come to mind is the lack of communication about Douglas. I, we just want some closure, man. Is he coming out or is he not? I'm saying he's missing in action because there is physical evidence of the figure being made and produced. We just have to see it hit store shelves. And I just want Jazzwares to let us know, is it or is it not coming? And if it is, when is it coming out? Because it just really sucks to see that this is the last figure we need the complete red team. And it's it just didn't hit store shelves. Like, as much as I love the Belos Ron, I'd rather have taken Douglas over Belos Ron because at least Douglas, he's a part of a team of Spartans where the Belos Ron is just a miscellaneous multiplayer Spartan that doesn't really go with any of the other Spartans that we've seen in the Spartan collection. Uh, but it just sucks to see that we have this missing figure and Jazzwares doesn't want to fill us in on why it's missing. And even though this is going to seem bad, um, the, there's only one thing I do like about Wave 8 that doesn't have to do with the individual releases, and it's the fact that they fixed the elbow articulation with the Spartan Collection figures, because that's something I've been wanting to see for a long time, and now it's here. Uh, my whole philosophy is if a figure can have their forearm go past the 90 degree mark, that is good elbow articulation. And for the longest time, all of the Spartan Collection figures elbows would stop at the 90 degree mark. Uh, but with this new wave and this new improvement upon the figures, you know, I'm very happy to see that the forearms can go above the 90 degree mark. And, you know, this is also a sign that Jazzwares is consistently trying to improve their figures because wave 7 we saw the improvement of the knee articulation and just the next wave later we have improved elbow articulation so I'm excited to see what Jazzwares is going to touch up on and improve with wave 9 so with that being said that's pretty much all I have to say about wave 8 so when it comes to wave 8 it's a solid wave there's a lot to like the positives definitely outweigh the negatives unfortunately we do have one missing figure that would have made this wave even better than it already is and with that said yeah let's move on to the outro oh my god this video is almost done and here we are in the outro holy shit i never thought i'd see the day here we are on the 6th of february of recording this i said i wanted to get this video out in the first week of january what the fuck was i on i started this video about the second week of december in 2023 and here we are this video has been put off so many times it has been a life consuming video to make don't get me wrong i still love the spartan collection i'm still gonna love talking about halo and these figures but holy shit this video has been a time consuming just just tumor on my fucking well-being and i'm so glad to finally be in the outro segment because i never thought i'd see the day and don't worry, I still am going to love making content for you guys because it does bring me joy. So I'm not complaining or calling any of you out that I brought this upon myself. And uh, yeah, so don't worry, I'm not going to stop making content. Uh, 
regardless of how taxing this video was on my well-being. But hopefully, even though this video is a little over an hour, y'all still found it very enjoyable. Uh, again, the respected reviews for each individual release will be in the description of the video if you really want to take an in-depth look at any of the figures I did talk about. Um, and I know that this video isn't formatted like the Republic Commando, an overview and analysis video, and I kind of went on tangents or I might have been a little repetitive. I do apologize if I, I did get really bad with any of that, uh, but I do appreciate if you're at this, this far into the video. It does mean a lot. It means that y'all do care and do have interest in what I have to say about this stuff, and it, it only motivates me more to make more content. But with all that said, if you did enjoy the video, a like and subscription would be greatly appreciated. Don't worry about commenting. I know it hurts your fingers a lot. I get it, a lot of effort. But if you do want to bounce off anything I did say in the video, you are more than welcome to. And I will most likely reply to y'all's comments because clearly I love talking about this stuff. And uh, don't worry about the bell. That shit is broken. And if you want to see more content like this, I have plenty of Spartan Collection videos up on the channel. Uh, I've done another overview analysis video on the Re Republic Commando Black Series figures. If you want to check out a, you know, overview and analysis video that isn't nearly as long as this one. And uh, I also do like do Star Wars and Predator and Alien stuff. So if uh, any of those franchises uh, interest you, go check them out. And I'm going to uh, make sure I don't cry myself to sleep tonight. So stay hydrated. It's important. Have a good one.